doing nearly all the work and mum's virtually doing none of the work, the first thing I want to do is put mum and dad in the same room so they can have a head-on confront about these issues. What I would like you both to do is to come to the easels and write down what you believe your responsibilities are at present. It was basically me and my wife face to face and I, I thought it was going to lead to some sort of confrontation. Now pick those responsibilities that you actually do. So if we both do it, let's tick against it. It was difficult, Eric and I facing each other. We don't communicate. Mum finds excuses of why she doesn't just knuckle down and take ownership of her responsibilities. It's building up resentment. Dad's tolerance is zero. He's very cheesed off. Eric, how many points? Fourteen. Fourteen. And how many of those bullet points have you ticked? Nine. Okay, how many bullet points do you have? I have seven. Seven. How many do you actually do of those? One. Doesn't that say something? That Eric's doing the majority of the work. Mum's taking Dad for granted, and she knows it. Do you have anything on your responsible easel here that you feel Mum could have on hers? Um, driving them to school on occasions. What do you think about that? Driving them to school? What do you think about that? Same. Do you think that's something you should be doing? Yeah. I mean, do you agree with it or not? I mean, at the end of the day, it's just about you two. No, I talking about that. Um, I don't. I wouldn't mind driving them to school. What else do you see on this list that you believe should be a shared responsibility? You know, laundry, cleaning up the house, bath yeah. time. I, we should split it. It was uncomfortable to kind of get all of those things out and have them right in front of you to read in black and white. Does it seem fair? Yeah. Yeah. I think I could add helping with the homework online too. Mm -hmm. the yeah. With her taking a lot of the chores and splitting them in half does take a lot off my shoulder. With mum and dad now doing right, it's time to tackle the kids. We've got twins who are four years old and they are constantly sucking on those pacifiers and it really isn't any good for them. So what I'm going to do is introduce them to a very special young lady. This is our own Binky Fairy. We're going to explain to the children that the Binky Fairy came and that the Binky Fairy is collecting all the Binkies to give to the babies that need them. And we're going to help the Binky Fairy. And then it was showtime. You know what this is? Look at Billy. Do you know who that is? The Binky Fairy. That's her. She came to visit. See the net she has? So she's here today. She wants to help us collect all the beans and bring them to the little baby. As I suspected, Luke wasn't going to give up his pacifier without a real fight. So are you going to help us? You don't need that. You want to put a high five, Lily. Lily was more than ready to hand over her pacifier. She wanted to be a big girl. She wanted to show us all she was a big girl. Luke, on the other hand, was devastated. Yeah. Yeah. That, 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 you have to know the better to do this, okay? You're a big boy now, and you don't need that binky anymore. Yeah. I did not think I would be able to just take the binkies away from them. Yes, we're going to take the binky. Okay? The binky fairy. The binky fairy needs it. You are a big boy now, okay? And it's not good for you anymore. I gotta take it, all right? No, 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 no. And he wasn't a happy chappy. Just place the beachy fairy up somewhere in the kitchen, yes.
You're a big boy now. But you are. Your turn to spend. After almost an hour, Luke did mm. finally calm down. So tomorrow I want to finish off the Binky Fairy because I've got a little surprise for them. You know, I can see why parents get a little bit apprehensive about having the sex talk with their kids. But at the end of the day, Dad's got no choice. So I gave him some tips to help him along the way. And now it's down to these two men to have a conversation. I was nervous sitting down. It's a tough conversation to have. We don't communicate enough at all. Uh, and that has to change. You have issues in school, with issues with your friends, girlfriends, whatever it is. Just come to me. Ask me. I could see that within the conversation there was a lot of pause. And I know it's where Dad was revving up the courage to get on to the next topic. And I thought, this is not going to happen. So I grabbed young Eric's condoms. I thought you boys might want to talk about that. Hey, Josh. Oh, uh, yeah, I guess. You meet him? I guess not. I think you're way too young. As awkward as this conversation is going to be for Dad, it's absolutely vital that he have it because he could stop little Eric from making some really bad choices. Realize what the consequences are? Mm -hmm. What is the consequence? Eric could get her pregnant, there's HIV, there's a bunch of diseases. Yeah, it was an uncomfortable conversation to say the least, but it was a relief. Now it's teaching him going forward. You get a girl pregnant, I mean, you got a, you got a, a lifetime commitment. Mentally, physically, financially. And this young? The way Dad actually handled the conversation was impressive because he was mature. I'm glad we talked. Do you have any questions? <clears throat> now you know you can come to me. As much as the conversation may have felt awkward for dad i'm really glad that he had this conversation with eric because let's face it i mean if you can talk about sex you can talk about most things right coming up on super nanny it's mom's turn and eric has some explaining to do you know the seriousness yeah i know i know you do yeah okay. what do you know what do you know and later it's bedlam at bedtime when super nanny returns Thank mm -hmm.